Hi everybody, Dan Ullman here taking a look at the $75,000 New York Oaks at Finger Lakes on Monday. Carded as race number eight. This race is for three-year-old Philly. New York Breads going a mile and a sixteenth on the dirt. And let's take a peek at this field. Pre-scratches, it is a big competitive field. And perhaps the handicapping uh, aspect that you want to consider most are horses stretching out in distance. You have several sharp horses around one turn. They're going to try their metal around two. And stamina is going to be key. Pace is going to be key. So we'll throw up the Timeform US pace projector, and I agree with Timeform US. I believe the number three, No Chalk, will make the lead. She just looks like a pure speed horse who prompted fast fractions last time out when a runner up in the Niagara. She has one going a one turn mile, although that race was just by the skin of her teeth. If she can get to the lead and back down the fractions, I do think she has enough pedigree to last this. Distance. One of you free Sometimes formulator pass performances, performances for this race? Head to the Race of the Day page at drf.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel. And bet this card with DRF Bets. to tuck into a nice pace tracking ground saving trip from the inside post. We'll watch Galaxina's race from two starts back, the New York Stallion Series on April the 24th at Akrook. This race had six and a half furlongs. She got a very nice trip, pushing a slow pace on the outside. She was outpaced a bit on the turn. The leader got away from her, but she was able to grind it down and gamely win. She was a huge price in this race. 24 to 1. She'll be a mere fraction of that price here as she goes around two turns for the first time, and I guess the distance is a bit of a question, but you can understand why they tried the turf last time out, because if you look in this female family, you see names like Forever Together, who won the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf, two editions of the Grade 1 Diana at Saratoga, and one of the better middle to longer distance turf horses of her crop. Uh, Galaxina has enough pedigree, I believe, to last this distance. I think the grinding style we just witnessed at Aquaruck will work well for her as she stretches out, and she does have the tactical speed to work out a good trip. Curly Girl is the number two, another filly stretching out in distance, another with an acceptable pedigree by Kentucky Derby winner Nyquist. She's also going to make her third start of the year, and it's possible she's slowly racing herself back into shape. She showed some quality as a two-year-old, winning the Lady Fingers sprinting, but I was a little disappointed with her performance last time out in the Niagara, finishing behind a couple of these. There was a fast pace for her, and Curly Girl was just able to sort of clunk up and finish third. I wonder if she's plateaued at the buyer level she's at right now, sort of the mid to high fifth and Galaxina earned a 79 buyer speed figure two starts back, so Curly Girl's going to really have to pick it up as she stretches out for the first time. The three is no chalk, and she ran well in the Niagara last time out. It was a fast pace. She opened up a big lead on the turn, and she was run down at the end by Eros's girl, who's also in this race. Her speed makes her automatically dangerous, and I do believe, again, there is enough pedigree for her to get the distance if she can relax. That is a big if. She obviously has talent. She earned a 70 buyer speed figure two two starts back, and if they can back down the fractions, I would expect her to try to blast off and open up a big lead on the third, on the second turn and say, listen, catch me if you can during this third quarter. She's going to be getting late, and if you're a fan of hers, you're probably screaming, wire, wire, but no chalk is a dangerous pace presence. I would want a little bit more than four to one, considering the distance and stamina questions. The number four is Racing Queen. She's going to be a big price in this race, deservedly so. She's an 11-time maiden who was beaten by multiple lengths last time out in a maiden special way. That race was over a sloppy track going five and a half. She's another filly who's going to have to try two turns for the first time, but her buyer speed figures are just very, very light. I don't know where the improvement's coming from after 11 lifetime starts. She must improve. Sister Lind is a strong contender in this race. She up from the Naira circuit for trainer Michelle Nevin. Let's watch her last race. She's two for two in 2022, and both of her races have been fairly impressive. She earned a 77 buyer speed figure in the race we're watching now, a one-turn mile and a 16th, one other than allowance race for New York Breds. She opened up a lead after sitting a nice trip off of a moderate pace, and she was much the best. And this race was flattered. When the runner-up came right back to win, her first level New York Red Allowance condition with a 79 buyer speed figure. Distance is no issue for Sister Linda. She has the tactical speed to basically be adaptable to any kind of pace uh, situation. An 8 to 1 on the morning line is respectable and very, very fair. The 6 is she's as cold as ice. This filly is on a roll for trainer Anthony Ferraro. She's won her last two races, albeit against weaker company. Her most recent score came at Presque Isle Downs over there to PETA surface. It was an open $40,000 beat claimer, and she was able to sit off the pace that day and finish. Dirt shouldn't be a problem. She won around two turns at Finger Lakes, two starts back in an open second uh, two-life allowance race. She is going to benefit if the pace is fast. The buyers seem to be going the right way. It appears that she's figured this out, and she is just bred to run all day long. Keep an eye on she's as cold as ice. 
if you believe this pace is going to be hot. The seven is Charge Nurse. So we're going to watch Charge Nurse's last race. And I thought she ran well in her first start against winners. She carved out legitimate fractions going a mile and 70 yards. 23 and 2 for the opening quarter. She tried to open up at a key point in the interior fractions. And she just got run down late by a horse who came back to win a three-life allowance with a 64 buyer speed figure. Charge Nurse by Travers winner Alpha has improved since stretching out. She has never been off the board from four lifetime starts. She's likely going to have to sit off the pace in here. I think some of these stretch out sprinters are faster out of the gate than she is, but she does have some upside potential. She's going to have to show it again. Her buyers pale in comparison with those of the main contenders. Eros's girl is the number eight. We're going to watch her victory in the Niagara going six furlongs. So I thought she got a set up in this race. No chalk went very fast. Opened up a big lead turning into the stretch. Eros's girl is going to run her down late. It was a career best performance. 67 buyer speed figure for Eros's girl, who is now uh, a three for four lifetime at Finger Lake. She really seems to like it here. The dam won several times around two turns, and while Boise Toscanova was more of a sprinter miler, he's done well with his dirt routers, according to Formulator stats. So I think Eros's girl might have the right running style and pedigree for this race. She's going to have to do it. A lot of times, these late-running sprinters, well, that's what they are. They're late-running sprinters, and they're unable to sort of convert that late kick going two turns. Seven to two on the morning line, though, for a filly that is in very, very good form, and might get the right pace set up. Sweet Mave is the number nine. She won last time out this race. This was her Finger Lakes debut after beginning her career on the Naira circuit. This race, five and a half furlongs over a sloppy track and another very good situation. Very fast pace for her. They went 22 for the opening quarter and these pace setters got very tired. Sweet Maeve got a nice trip and she was able to win. She's going to have to prove that she is this good against tougher competition. Certainly going the right way. Has likely found a home here at Finger Lakes, but again, big class test for the number nine. The tennis silent invasion will watch her last race. It's two life allowance. What was good about this race was it was her first start around two turns. She got a very nice ride, I thought, in this race. She was able to just jump out to the lead from the inside post as the favorite. She was able to take advantage of the fact that she was the main speed in this race, and she was just able to hang on. By her speed figure, much the best of her career, 65. She's going the right way, but it's unlikely she's going to get this kind of trip from this kind of post with all the speeds to her inside. It's nice to know that she can win from slightly off of the pace. Before we get to our top selection, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for all the latest DRF TV video offerings. I'm gonna go with Galaxina in the New York Oaks. Like the way she won two starts back, very strong by her speed figure. I think her grinding style is gonna work well for her going a mile in the 16th, and I think the pedigree is there, but I don't wanna go any lower than five to two at post time. I also want to use the number five, Sister Linda, who just looks very, very logical off those two nice victories at Belmont, and you don't worry about distance. The New York Oaks, competitive race on Monday at Finger Lakes. Good luck.